but we don't need the ability to arm ourselves against the army or the police. What kind of a situation in the U.S. would well, you see like that happening? See, I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons. Discovered that clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. To say we're not turning our guns in and we're not running and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. Rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty. It's Alex Jones. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I've yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hands. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions? My whole life has been so good. There's been a lot of trials and tribulations, but all of it's made me stronger. And I just want to experience this journey with you. I want our children to grow up together, and their children and their children to have a future that goes to the stars and beyond. And we can do this. I just want to win. I want humanity to succeed. And I'm so sick of people that don't like humanity. So I get wound up because I, it's fight and flight, and there's nowhere to run. So I'm like a raccoon in the garage. Somebody's about to kill, man. I don't have a choice. I'm going to fight. Well, today marks the 125th anniversary of the Wounded Knee Massacre. Now, this was the last major confrontation in the long war between the United States and the Native American tribes from the Great Plains. Now, coming up after the break, we're going to be playing an excerpt from our interview with Russell Means, uh, where he remembers the Wounded Knee Massacre, and he also describes uh, the United States, the entirety of the United States, being a present-day reservation. Now, David Knight joins me to break down this. Give us your interpretation um, of what Russell Means is talking about with the U.S. being a reservation, um, as well as a little bit of historical background. Thank you, uh, Leanne. I, I couldn't agree with Russell Means more because, yes, America truly is a reservation. He wrote a book called Where White Men Fear to Tread. And in that book, he said, the American government has broken every treaty it's ever made with the Indians. He said, white man, your treaty with the government is your constitution, your bill of rights, and they're destroying that right now. We need to learn some lessons from Wounded Knee. This is not simply a contest between the white man and the red man. No, this tells us something about the very nature of the government we live under today. It hasn't really changed, even though this is 125 years later. So we look at this, Leanne, and, and many people look at this and say, well, this is a race war against Native Americans. This was uh, revenge of the Seventh Cavalry. This was genocide. No, it really was democide, and that's what we really need to understand. Let's get a little bit of history here. Everybody's familiar with uh, General Custer and his last stand, okay, the Battle of Little Bighorn. That had taken place 14 years earlier. It was the Seventh Cavalry. That cavalry was the same one that was part of this massacre at Wounded Knee. So they were closer to that massacre at uh, Little Bighorn, 14 years away, than we are to 9-11. Hmm. And I found it very interesting that even though that had happened, even though they'd been at war with the Indians, uh, they still had Indians on this reservation that had firearms. And that's one of the key things about this when it broke out. Now, they'd been on the reservation for quite some time, and we'll talk about the parallels between the reservation and our welfare system. 
just as I mentioned the parallels between the treaties that our government made in the Constitution. We'll also talk about what they did to the Indians in terms of education, how they tried to completely and utterly destroy their culture using an educational establishment. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the events itself. Um, what was happening on that day 125 years ago, they were having a ghost dance. It was a ceremony, it was a religious ceremony, kind of a mystic uh, thing that was going on. But also at the same time, the 7th Cavalry came up in a very provocative way, the same way that we see happen often when there are protests, right. uh, whether it's Ferguson and other places, the police will come or the government will come in a very provocative way to try to provoke an incident. And that's what they did in this particular situation. Said, you're gonna have to stop this, you need to disband, we're gonna move you off of this reservation, and give us your guns. Now, there was one particular individual named Black Coyote. He was a deaf Indian. And he said, I don't want to give you my gun. I paid a lot of money for this gun. There was a struggle that ensued. There was a gunshot that was fired. Not clear who fired the first shot. But after that, it was on. And it was an all-out massacre. They used cannon fire against the Indians that were there. But let me read you some of the eyewitness accounts from an investigation from the Department of the Interior. Actually, it was the Commission of Indian Affairs at the time, one year later. And this is what they said. They said, right near the flag of truce, a mother was shot down with her infant. The child, not knowing its mother was dead, was still nursing. An especially sad sight. The, woman, uh, the women, as they were fleeing with their babies, were killed together, shot right through. Women who were pregnant were also killed. A woman who survived lost her daughter and baby boy. According to her account, one shot passed through the baby's body, hit her elbow, causing him to drop to the ground. She was also hit twice in the back. Now, when I looked at this, what this reminded me of was what happened with the FBI at Ruby Ridge back in the 90s. Okay, what did we have there? We had an FBI sniper, Lon Horiuchi, who clearly at point blank range for a sniper knew that he was shooting straight in the head a mother holding her baby, armed with nothing but a baby. Now, what happened to Lon Horiuchi? Well, he was given a medal. And we have the people who were involved in this massacre. 300 uh, Indians uh, died uh, that were there. Uh, they were later buried in a mass grave. Their bodies were stripped naked and they were thrown into a pit. Uh, the same types of democides that we see being done whether it's by uh, the Turkish government against the Armenians, whether it's by the Nazis against the Jews and other people that they oppressed, or whether it's the American government against its own people. And what they did was they gave out, there were 25 uh, American so uh, U.S. Army soldiers who were killed. 20 members who survived were given uh, medals of honor by the Army. It's their oh. highest award. Same thing they did with Juan Horiuchi, right? Mm -hmm. And as a result of this, there have been movements by the Indian uh, uh, people to try to get these medals revoked. 125 years later, the people who got these medals are, are long gone. But the government will not take those medals away. That is the most amazing thing to me, is that they won't take these medals away. They won't admit that they did anything wrong. Right. And of course, you know, when we look at the reservation system, you mentioned uh, uh, Russell Means, and we're going to play a long segment uh, from Russell Means because we went out and, and Rob Dew and others were able to uh, interview Russell Means before he died. And uh, there was a very famous incident, uh, Wounded Knee in 1973. Uh, Russell Means and others of the American Indian Movement occupied that because it is a very important symbolic uh, incident, both for the American government as well as for the Indians. Uh, the American government essentially was declaring victory in its war against the Indians. It was the last battle that uh, occurred between the U.S. government and the American Indians. And I think when we look at this, we need to understand that the government wants to continually divide us into white, black, red, so that we fight against each other. But they use the same tactics against all of us. Right. They use the same tactics against all of us, whether we're white or black today that they were using against the Indians in the 1800s. And when we look at this, it was not only the broken treaties, but it was a reservation system, which closely parallels the welfare plantation that they have created in America today. And that's what they, what they did. They sealed them off. They took away their ability to earn a living. Uh, they, they keep very uh, tight controls on them. There's a great deal of corruption with the Indian Bureau. That's been well documented. Of course, there's been a couple of films talking about what happened with the American uh, Indian movement, Leonard Peltier and Russell Means. Uh, there was a director, Michael Apted, who did two films. One of them was a documentary, Incident at Oglala. 
Uh, the other one is a fictional uh, dramatization loosely based on those incidents called Thunderheart, stars Val Kilmer. So there's uh, uh, a parallel in that, but I think the key thing that we need to, in the little bit of time that we've got left, the key thing we need to talk about is I think the most important thing, and not only the welfare state and, and confining people uh, shutting down all avenues that allow them to be human, you know, confining where they can live, confining what they can do, uh, constricting their movement. We're going to see control of transportation. But here's how you really destroy a culture, how you really destroy people. And this is what they did to the Indians. They took away, once they got them confined on the reservations, they took away their children. Right. They shipped them back east to boarding schools to completely culture you know, uh, uh, put them Culturally into a different... annihilate them. Exactly. Annihilate their culture and educate them into a different system. And that's why the government wants to run your educational system. And if you don't want that to happen to your people, your family, your culture, your country, get your kids out of the government school. Put them in a private school, homeschool them, do something, but take control of their education. If you don't, they will take them away from you. They will take your country away from you. They will take your liberty away from you. That's the fun fundamental point. This reservation system destroying and lying to everyone about this. It's not an issue of white versus red. It's right. an issue of democide. Absolutely. And and we are still seeing that. We, we're seeing children who are being raised in this socialized school system who yes. are now actively trying to get rid of the First Amendment. Yes. The Second yes. Amendment. They have no... Uh, historical understanding and and it's just like you said it's it's cultural annihilation and people don't get it they don't yeah. understand why america is fundamentally being transformed and perhaps they don't want to hear it from you a I'm white sorry? man how dare well, you you know bill ayers is it was far more dangerous once he got involved in education than he was when he was bombing buildings with the weather underground right okay and it's far more dangerous to have a muslim group come into this country and set up schools that are going to proselytize and kids for Turkey or whatever, okay, it's far more dangerous for them to do that than to strap bombs on their bodies and blow people up at shopping centers. We have to understand where the real danger is coming from, and that's how you destroy a country from within. Every dictator, every would-be dictator understands that. Give me your kids at an early age, and I will change your entire culture. My goodness. Well, this is going to be very important, and I know we'll be speaking about this more, so Stick around because after the break, we're going to be playing our interview with Russell Means and remembering the Wounded Knee Massacre. Brain Force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're going to crash. You're going to feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. 